This is the All Anal, All Anal, All Anal, All Anal Podcast with your host, Sebastian Star. Sebastian Star. With your host, Sebastian Star. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the All Anal Podcast. I am your host, Sebastian Star, and today I kind of wanted to not necessarily talk about one thing in particular, but rather a period in time, if you will. So if you could just bear with me for just one second. So there was this point in, say, the early 2000s, kind of seeping its way into the mid-2000s and very lightly sprinkling into the early 2010s, where a select few artists would push out these types of songs that would you know, highlight the sophisticated and independent woman. It, it's a very, like, weird open gap in time period, in the time period for music where you would have a wide variety of artists, you know, from R&B singers to gangster rappers talking about how they pride themselves on being able to, you know, fit the caliber that it takes to impress and basically woo an independent woman. And then you ask yourself, well, what is your definition of an independent woman? Well, let's see. This is a woman who, you know, has a very, you know, high paying job. She's a CEO of a business or she owns her own business. She's a broker. She's a lawyer. She's a doctor. She's an investor. She's a creator. She, you know, drives around in these really luxury cars, these very expensive cars. She wears expensive perfumes and she only has like high quality heels and business suits, well-dressed, tailor-made to fit clothes and attire. Her hair is always done. Her nails are always perfect. Her smile is gorgeous. She takes care of herself. She's healthy. You know, she goes to the gym and works out. She follows a very strict diet. You know, she can pull more money in a week than the average nigga can pull in a year, you know? And the thing that these songs all had in common was that they not only highlighted that woman, but they kind of, I want to say, encouraged women to be that sophisticated caliber, fit that description, because those were the type of women that those type of men were attracted to. And again, the spectrum is broad. It was all sorts of of artists and musicians that played into that ideology that an independent woman, a strong, smart, sexy, and successful woman is the type of woman that we want to see. You know, you're, you're, you're tired of dealing with, you know, below average females who, you know, dusty, dirty, don't take care of themselves, don't take care of their kids, don't take care of their families. They always bumming around asking niggas for change and, and money for weed or alcohol. But stay having these like cheap press on nails or like knockoff brands for clothes and shoes and bags. But you always in a nigga face talking about some what can you do for me? You want me. What can you do for me? I need you to provide for me this, that and the third. But there is a shift. It was that shift in music where men were saying we love strong women. We love smart women. We love beautiful women who are their own bosses. We love boss women. So let's fast forward to the year 2021. Okay. You have an entire generation of women who pride themselves on being independent. These women are smart. These women are successful. These women have very high standards. These women only present themselves in the highest caliber possible. And they only seek men who will benefit them or make their success greater. They don't settle for anything less. Now, I say all of that to say this. There has been a lot of circulation, speculation on social media about men who are unattracted to strong, smart, sophisticated women. In other words, they are intimidated by independent women. And I see it a lot. I see it everywhere. I see it all the time. It's all over the place. You have these quote unquote alpha males who will sit on social media making videos, long posts, long threads saying how women are no longer submissive. Women think that they're better than men. Women want to do everything for themselves and they don't need a man to provide for them anymore. You have women who are doing so much better than most men 
Their jobs are treating them fairly. They're being very successful. They're their own business owners. They work for themselves. They make great money and they have very high standards, like I said. And they only look for men who fit that criteria or are following in that same caliber, that same bracket. And these same quote unquote alpha males are so intimidated by that, that they're trying to make it seem like it's the woman's fault that they can't meet their criterias and they don't want to rise to those standards and be better for themselves in order to get that type of woman. Now, I think that that's backwards. (laughs) I think that's completely and totally backwards because literally just 15 years ago, just 15 years ago, there were so many songs that were on the radio, that were on TV, and, and even the shows that portrayed these types of women were a bit more popular during that time period. So if you think about, say me, for example, my generation, the millennials, quote unquote, or I'm somewhere in between. I was born in 95, so I'm not a Gen Z, but I'm not a millennial. I'm like somewhere smack dab in the middle. We grew up listening to songs like this. We grew up listening to Independent by Lil Webby and Lil Boosie, uh, to Miss Independent by Neo, to She Got Her Own by Jamie Foxx. You, we grew up playing those songs on repeat. Our parents did, our cousins did, our sisters did. And then you wonder why this same type of generation is so set on being strictly independent. And I'm not going to sit here and say that the music 100% fueled the quote unquote feminist movement that is booming through society right now. But I think it's ironic as hell that the same generation of young girls who were listening to songs like Miss Independent and She Got Her Own are now doing, they're now doing what the description in the songs portrayed them as. They're independent women. They don't need men to provide for them anymore. And the the controversy, the, the hypocritical controversy is if you have a strong man, an independent man, a man who can take care of himself with no outside or excess assistance, that's normal. That's standard. What does he need a significant other for? What does he need a wife or a girlfriend for? Someone to take care of the house, right? Someone to cook, someone to clean, someone to tend to the children. He works all day. He's tired. You understand, right? And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with a traditional standard household where you have the man who works, you know, nine, 10 hours a day, comes home to a hot home cooked meal from his wife. The children are tended to and prepped for bed. You know, there isn't anything wrong with that. With that being said, there's also nothing wrong with the inverse of that. You have a strong woman, an independent woman. She doesn't need you to provide for her. She can take care of herself and she would probably honestly be better off without some thirsty ass nigga all up in her face every 30 minutes asking her when she's coming home, right? So what does the what is the man for? What does the man do? What does she need a husband, a boyfriend for? Well, she's working all day. Why don't you clean the house? Make her some dinner. If y'all got kids, tend to them. Make sure that they good to go for the next day. There's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with being a stay-at-home spouse, whether you're the husband or the wife or whatever. But for some reason, these quote-unquote alpha males are so intimidated by that type of woman. And my whole argument is there was a time period where this woman, who is now a grown woman with her own business, smart, strong, and sophisticated, was listening to music that painted the picture of what an independent woman was, and they made her out to be this beautiful woman. They made her out to be dazzling, breathtaking, you know, exhilarating. They made her out to be the type of person that when she walked into the room, everyone takes notice. Everyone sees you. Everyone hears you. You aren't, you know, arrogant. You're not all up in someone's face. Uh, 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 Look at me. Look at me. You're not begging for attention, but attention finds you when you step into the room because that's the type of energy you put out. 
And the kind of man that's attracted to you will only benefit you. The type of man that the independent woman attracts is someone who will help her become better. They won't drag her back down into the mud and force her to lower her standards. They will rise to her standards, not only bettering themselves, but bettering her life as a true companion, which is really the whole point of having a significant other in the first place. Now, why do some men find that to be a challenge? I don't know. Why are some men so intimidated by independent women? I don't know. Why do some men feel it's not a woman's place to be strong and independent by themselves, completely capable of fending for themselves in any given situation, whether it be physical, financial, mental, you know, they don't have to worry about going to a guy to find a house. They already have a house. They don't need to worry about going to a guy to get a car. They already have a car. I don't need you to provide me food. I can cook for myself or take myself out. I don't need you to buy me clothes, shoes, accessories, etc. I can do all of that myself. Why are some men so intimidated by that? I don't know. And I really think it's like an ego thing. I think some men for so long were so conditioned into thinking that they are all a woman needs. It's just them, just how they come. So they're under the impression they don't need to do anything else extra. But at the same time, in the same breath, with the same energy, will tell a woman that she needs to be able to do everything. I need you to clean this house from top to bottom every single day, spotless when I come home. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. If we have children, they need to be tended to 24-7. You need to be able to do everything. What am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to be working. I'm going to be paying all of the bills. I'm going to be putting food in the house, putting clothes on your back, putting shoes on your feet, putting gas in the car. And the argument is, if I can already do all of that, what the fuck do I really need you for? That's the argument. That is the argument that is fueling the feminist movement right now. It's not that women don't need men or women hate men or men are useless. That's not true. That's not the argument. The argument is if me as an individual, take the gender out of the equation for a second. If me as an individual human being living and breathing a full grown adult, let's say 25, can provide for myself in all aspects, I'm stable physically, I'm stable financially, I may not be the most stable mentally or emotionally, but that's okay because no one really is, and I can take care of myself, then what the fuck do I need you for? What can you bring to the table, quote unquote, that will benefit me in my life? If your answer is, oh, well, I can give you a place to stay. I can give you a car. I can give you food. I can give you clothes. I can already do all of that. That's just adding more of what I already have. What can you bring to benefit, to make my life better, to make my life easier, to make my life happier, to make my life more enjoyable? If you can't answer that question that immediately you're taken out of the equation because you're not doing anything to benefit me. You're doing something to benefit yourself. If anything, you need me more than I need you. And that's the fuel of the feminist movement. It's not that women hate men. It's not that all men are useless. It's the ideology that some men have, and I'm saying some very explicitly, just to clarify, I'm not referring to all men because, again, in that same time period where these singers and rappers were making music about independent women, there were men on the other side of that who could agree, yes, that's the kind of woman that I want. I want someone who can take care of herself. She doesn't even need me to do nothing. I just make her look better. I just make her life a little bit easier. You had a long day at work, baby. Let me massage your feet. Talk to me about your day. What's going on? That, that bitch Sabrina in the office is chipping again. What did she say to you this time, huh? What's going on? Talk to me. I'll, I'll cook you up some chicken alfredo with broccoli. I know you like that shit. Just make my life easier than it already is. That's what you're there for. And if you're a man who is intimidated by an independent woman, then don't go after them. And the, and the crazy thing about this argument that these quote unquote alpha males are making 
is that women need to lower their standards. Your standards are way too high. You expect a man to do all of this for you. And what can you do for him? Exactly. I can do everything for him because at the end of the day, a man will chase a woman to the ends of the earth for some pussy before a woman will chase a man halfway across the world for some dick. I guarantee you. I don't doubt it for a second. I really don't. So the argument is silly because it's like the man needs the woman more than the woman needs the man. Again, this isn't to insinuate that men are useless or that feminists hate men. But women are just starting to realize that they don't need them. It's not a need. You're not a necessity. And that's part of the problem is that some of these men find that they're no longer needed. They're no longer necessary. I can live my life just fine without you. But that doesn't change the fact that I may want you in my life or that I would like to have you in my life. I just don't need you here to be comfortable. That is the fuel. That's how it all kind of breaks down. That's the undertone. And so many men will let that fly over their head because all they hear is, oh, you don't need me? No, I don't. But I want you. And I feel like this is just me personally. If I say that I want you, that means just as much as I need you. Because I need you insinuates that my life would fall apart if you weren't here. I want you insinuates you would make my life better if you were in it. So, I mean, what's what what what, what what's wrong with that? What's the problem? I don't understand. And maybe it's because I don't have the mindset of a guy to completely understand what is so bad about that. But again, a lot of men would be like, yes. Yes, yes, I want a woman who can take care of herself because I'm not trying to raise a little girl with daddy issues. I'm not trying to baby a grown ass woman who can very easily take care of herself, but is choosing not to. I want someone to tell me what to do. A lot of men don't mind playing a submissive role. They just need a strong enough woman to be the dominant and they don't have a problem with that. And there isn't anything wrong with being a dominant woman Because you know that at the end of the day, your man is going to take care of you. What exactly is the problem? It's it's, it's hurting your fragile masculinity that this woman makes more money than you, is more successful than you, can do without you in her life altogether. And that just grinds your gears so much that you'd rather not deal with them. Or better yet, you would try to make them feel as insecure as you actually feel by telling them that they need to change if they want to find someone because there's nobody on the planet who will tolerate a woman who doesn't need a man. That is a fucking lie. There are plenty of men on the planet who will not only tolerate an independent woman, but will cherish an independent woman and cater to an independent woman and love her unconditionally because that's the kind of woman that he needs, that he needs in his life. And we're not talking about the same one that like mooches off their rich wives, you know, spending all their money on dumb shit. I'm talking about the ones who really see a woman thriving, striving, growing for greatness, being better and better every single day. He's so driven by he that makes him want to be better. That makes him want to try harder and do better to impress her, to keep her around because he knows that she's benefiting his life so much that the mere thought of her not being in it just can't work. But you got some men out there who just can't handle that. There are some men out there who just refuse to get with the damn program and understand that times are changing. Women are growing. Women are becoming smarter. Women are becoming stronger. And yes, their standards are getting higher. Now, mind you, if you are a woman in that type of position and you're just a bitch, you're just an asshole, you're just a dickhead, you're just a, you know what I'm saying, cunt bucket. If you're just a bad person, then obviously no. It doesn't matter how successful you are or how great you are in what your in what your field is or what you do. Nobody's going to be attracted to someone who's just an asshole unless they're a gold digging, penny pinching, mutt muncher, whatever the fuck. They're not going to go for that. 
And no one's going to tolerate being treated like they're insignificant just because they exist. No one is going to tolerate that. That's not going to fly. But if you're a genuine person, an honest person, a decent person, a good person, a person with values, a person with a heart, someone who understands that your partner has emotions and feelings and dreams and ambitions just like you do and you choose to support that, then yes, absolutely, a man will submit to you if you show him that you're worth submitting to. And vice versa, if you a guy and you got all the money in the world but you're a dick, nobody is going to tolerate that shit. It doesn't matter how much money you have, nobody is going to tolerate this insolent ass, disrespectful ass attitude and demeanor. No one is going to do that. But if you're a genuine man who loves to cater to his woman and make sure that she's treated fairly and respected and valued and that her voice is heard, then of course women are going to flock to you like birds. So long story short, if you're a piece of shit, regardless of how much money you have or how much how successful you may be, no one is going to tolerate that dicky attitude or that cunty attitude for too, too long. And regardless of if you're a man or a woman or a non-binary individual, if you are strong, if you are smart, if you hold your standards to a certain degree and someone else tells you that you need to lower them, don't. Because obviously you understand your self-worth. You understand that you are worth more than just pennies on the dollar. You understand that you're worth more than just average. And you want someone to meet you at your level or to help you excel past it. And you should accept nothing less. And just because these fragile ass little boys out here who can't get their dick sweat and always got their feelings hurt tell you that you're too good and you need to lower your standards rather than saying, oh, you're too good for me. I need to level up. Then, then obviously <laughs> they're not even worth your time and attention. It's, it's, it's a cycle of this is what we see as greatness repeating over and over again from like I said, 15 years ago, if you can remember that time period where all of these songs were being created at once, they, they, I'm not going to say, again, they didn't fuel the feminist movie, but you can't be surprised that so many young women are starting to realize that they're worth more than a dick and a cheeseburger, and they refuse to accept anything less than greatness. They want more out of their significant others. So rather than make them feel like they are asking for too much, just be better. Simple. And if you can't do that, then you're obviously not worth their time. So that was my little spiel on the, I'm calling it the independent era of music. That again, was maybe the match that sparked. And then it just slowly begin to spread and build and grow. And then, of course, more fuel was added to the fire to make it what it is right now, which is, in short, the feminist movement. I would, I do consider myself a feminist, but I'm the type of feminist that believes in gender equality in the workplace. I believe in, you know, if a man and a woman are doing the same job at the same field and same level of experience, there's no reason why the man should be making more money than the woman because he's just a man. And that's the only reason why that's bogus. Again, I have nothing against the stay at home mom because that's a full time job in itself. But I'm also not against the stay at home dads who do everything for their wives like. There's nothing wrong with that. I believe in gender equality. Anything a man can do, a woman can do, and vice versa. Except, and I will die on this hilltop, you can say what you want to say about me. Except giving birth. That's the only thing that a man can't do, is carry a child to term and then birth it. That's it. Now... That can go a bunch of different ways because I know you got the whole Lil Nas X campaign with him being pregnant. But obviously, if you're not an idiot, that's a metaphor for his album being released. The metaphor is his baby and he's ready to deliver it to the world. It's metaphoric. Duh. You know, um, 
But again, I'll die on that hilltop. Other than that, you know, anything a man can do, a woman can do. A man can be a hair hairstylist, a beauty guru, a makeup artist, a fashion designer, a figure skater, a ballerina, a, you know, a, a model, whatever. A woman can be a auto mechanic, um, trade engineer, you know, working on AC units and railroad tracks and fucking plumbing, you know, grease monkeys, whatever, you know. There's no law, rhyme, or reason why those jobs can't be split evenly amongst men and women. There's no such thing as a girly job. Just like there's no such thing as a manly job. Anybody can do whatever they want, basically, is my whole thing. So if that makes me a feminist, then I guess I'm a feminist then. But thank you once again for tuning in and listening to my little take on feminism kind of spiraled into that, which I knew that was the direction it was going to go anyway, so I'm not surprised. But I appreciate the support as always. Until next time, I will speak to you all later. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the All Anal, All Anal, All Anal podcast with your host, Sebastian Starr.